Hi, I'm Dr. Winnie King in the lobby of the Children's Hospital at Montefiore in New York City. Did you know that children suffer strokes? Well, if that's news to you, you're not alone. A lot of medical personnel are in the dark as well. And the lack of awareness is a major obstacle to improving kids' treatment and recovery. Just listen to what happened to nine-year-old Brady Jones in Colorado. I was Brady's second grade teacher last year. The day he had the stroke, he told a little boy, a friend of his next to him, that his brain hurt, and he fell over. We got a phone call from the school about 1.30 uh, that said that our son was in the nurse's room, that he had passed down at PE, he was unresponsive, and so they called 911, and they took him to the ER. In the ER, they didn't tell us much of anything. We didn't see much of the doctor. And the nurse stayed with Brady the whole time. They were telling us that it looked as though he had had a seizure and that he was suffering from a seizure. And they were letting all this time go by. And my husband and I had both asked for an MRI. They did the CAT scan. They told us that was 90% accurate. I told them I didn't want 90% accurate. Was there anything else they can do? And they just really never even really answered us or anything. And I was in such a state of shock that I just sat over in the corner and listened to what they had to say and went along with it. And we sat there. And we sat there and we sat there and we sat there and it fought forever. It is very common for children such as Brady to not be diagnosed for quite a while. But what's very frustrating is that the best treatments are available only within the first three hours of the first stroke symptom. Finally, they transferred him to another facility and this was probably six hours after the initial passing out at school. They wanted to do an MRI right away. Within minutes of coming out of the MRI, uh, they told us that our son had suffered a massive stroke. In Brady's situation, he got to one hospital where they were not able to diagnose that he had a stroke. He was not at a stroke center. Whether or not being at the stroke center would necessarily have changed how fast the diagnosis happened, none of us will ever know. But the fact of the matter is, if you understand where stroke centers are, and you recognize a stroke symptom, your chances for being diagnosed correctly go up tremendously. In your recovery, what's, how do you, what do you feel is getting better? Do you feel like your, your hand? Good, good. And? And your foot? Mm -hmm. what, what do you feel like maybe is not coming around so quickly for you that you would like to have? Talking. Talking. Brady has been left with right side weakness and then of course the brain damage to the brain is we think he's going to be able to learn but he's having some issues with speech every night again he gets a sentence out but it's typically just kind of shoddy you know spot words that he's using i think he he gets by he's got a really good attitude which i'm very surprised actually because he's such a perfectionist and always has been that that he gets up with a smile on his face every day why you know, why did my son be one of those that fell through the cracks? What an awful question. You know, it's obviously devastating if a doctor misses the signs of a stroke in a child. But a big part of the solution is for parents to recognize the signs of strokes. Now, I want you to meet Dr. Dawn Kleindorfer. She's a neurologist from Cincinnati. And also Dr. Karen Balaban-Gill. She's a pediatric neurologist here at the Children's Hospital in Montefiore. And this is Allie Daniel and her very verbal son, Henry, who suffered a stroke in utero, which means actually during the pregnancy. And um, Dawn, let's start out with some basics here. What exactly uh, do we mean when we say a stroke in a child? Well, basically, there are two different kinds of stroke, um, they, and they occur about equally in children. The first kind of stroke is called ischemic, and that means that the blood flow has been blocked, either by a blood clot or a little bit of cholesterol, and that part of the brain starts to suffocate because it doesn't get oxygen and blood that it needs and starts to die. The other type of stroke is a bleeding type stroke, where the blood vessel ruptures and bleeding goes out into the brain or around the brain. That's what happens when a child has a stroke as well. Now, I understand that as many as 3,000 kids a year uh, 
experience a stroke, and that's about the same frequency as brain tumors. It's amazing, but what ages are more susceptible to stroke? The most common time for a child to have a stroke is actually within the first year of life. After that, the incidence drops a little bit and then starts to go up again in late adolescence as they head into adulthood. Well, Karen, uh, there are, besides the age factor, other risk groups, and I've certainly taken care of a lot of children with sickle cell anemia that uh, have gone on to have strokes. That's one risk group. What are some of the others? Children who are, have heart diseases, uh, born with heart disease, can have strokes. Children who have blood disorders that make their blood uh, more likely to clot than normal can have strokes. Children who have had brain infections, such as meningitis, um, during the time that they have the infection may have strokes. Uh, children or adolescents with high blood pressure at increased risk for strokes. And then less commonly, but children who become dehydrated and children who've had um, chickenpox infections within the last year are also at slightly increased risk to have strokes. And then there's a percentage where there are no risk factors. That's right. About a quarter of children who have strokes, in fact, have no underlying cause for the And that stroke. was like Brady that we just saw from Colorado, right. which is even more frustrating when there's nothing that you can, you can pin it on. Now, I know that for kids with sickle cell disease, there's a transfusion procedure that can really reduce the risk of strokes. So you should talk to your doctor about it if your kid is in that risk group. But uh, Karen, for parents in general, what are the signs? of stroke that uh, we should be uh, having parents look out for? Well, children who have strokes may complain of headache. They may uh, be weak on one side of their body, on an arm or a leg, or they may feel like one side of their body feels like it's asleep, is numb. Um, sometimes, like Brady, they might pass out uh, when they're having a stroke. That would be for the older child. Infants who, have, who are having a stroke, um, it's very, it may be very subtle and nonspecific. They may be crankier than usual. They may be sleepier than usual. They may just not feed very well. They may not be taking their bottle or nursing properly. Um, and then children, infants who have had a stroke, like Henry, but who've had a stroke in the past, those children, the way that parents may pick it up is as the child's beginning to develop, four months, six months, seven months old. The parents may notice that they're not using one side of the body as, e as much as they're using the other side of the body. They may keep one hand closed and in a fist. When they start crawling, they may drag the weak leg behind them. Um, uh, all of those are signs of a stroke. Well, Ali, um, your son Henry experienced the stroke when he was still inside your womb, which I know a lot of parents are thinking, wow, I didn't even know that could happen then. How did you realize that something had happened? Um, we didn't realize anything was wrong until Henry's one-year pediatric appointment. And at that time, I mentioned to his pediatrician that he was using his left hand much more than his right. And um, she pointed out that that should not be the case with um, a young child. And after doing various um, activities with him, determined that he needed an MRI yeah. and a neurologist. And that's when they determined he'd had a stroke. Now, retrospectively, though, looking back, like some of his baby pictures, did yeah. you kind of pick up that maybe there was some indication even then? Um, not really until after you, it was pointed out to me and we were looking for it. Um, but when we went back and looked after we had the knowledge, it was very clear in some pictures. For example, when he started finger foods, mm -hmm. he only used his left hand, and his right hand was really inactive, um, crawling. He never really crawled, but leaning on both arms, his um, right fist was clenched when he played with balls. Um, and swinging, he would only hang on with his left hand. Right. So it but wasn't until left handedness ran in your family, it right? It did. My husband's left handed, and so is my other son. So we weren't, I just thought that that's yeah. what it was, really. Hi, Henry. Can you say hi? Can you do hi. a thumbs up with your left hand? How are hand? you? Well, he's busy playing with his cards, but he's obviously got no problems with verbal development. He's doing extremely well with that. Um, Dawn, uh, what Allie discovered was uh, the signs that we find after there's been a stroke. But uh, what should parents be looking for uh, that would tell them that the child is actually having a stroke right there in front of them? Um, sure. Well, there are many warning signs that uh, people can have uh, weakness on one side of the face, mm -hmm. um, weakness in one side of the arm, or numbness in the face and the arm, slurred speech, or trouble talking, and time to call 911. Yeah, I mean, what is the thing you do? Because it's so frightening when you see this happening, That's evolution right. right in front of you. What, what do you want parents to do? Right, so what we want parents to do is to call 911 right away. Yeah. We don't want them to call their doctor or their friend or wait and see if it goes away. If they think that there might be a stroke happening, we want them to call 911 right away. And um, 
we would say that for young children, a pediatric emergency room is probably the best place for them to go. So you might talk to the EMS and say, are they going to go to a pediatric emergency room? For older adolescents, um, a nearby stroke center may be reasonable. You heard about that earlier in the show. For adults, stroke centers have been established and are being established across right. the country. But for young children, really, a pediatric emergency room is where they should be headed. Yeah, and it's okay to ask the EMS personnel, listen, I'm, I'm thinking stroke, I'm worried about this. You Absolutely. know, once you sort of put it out there, then they kind of respond to it once it's, it's been said. And once they're in the pediatric emergency room, asking for a pediatric neurologist is probably a good move as well. Yeah, being proactive, saying what Absolutely. you think, you know, it's so important. Absolutely. Karen, what can doctors do for kids that are having a stroke? Well, one of the important things they can do is look for the underlying cause, and some of the underlying causes that we discussed actually have specific treatments, and they can treat those underlying causes. For instance, a child with sickle cell who's having a stroke, they're going to do a transfusion quickly. Um, and then, in some instances, they we often give blood thinners to um, prevent a progression of the stroke, making it worse. Um, using the what people call the clot busters in children is somewhat controversial. There's not a lot of studies or, or no studies almost of using it in children. So many places won't use it in children, but some places might. At least getting in the healthcare system, though, we have the option Absolutely. of trying to decide whether or not we should do something. How do you help kids um, that have had a stroke recover? Well, we give them rehabilitation services. So we do physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech and language therapy to help them improve their ability to function. Yeah, you know, and in every state, there should be an early intervention program to help stroke victims from birth to age three. And guess what? A lot of these may actually be free. So be sure to ask your pediatrician or state or county health department about it because it may be sitting right out there and you just didn't know it. Um, what, in general, uh, Karen, is the uh, prognosis for children that have stroke? Well, children who have stroke. Um, they will do, in general, they'll do much better than adults would do if with the same type of a brain injury with the same size of a stroke. Most children will be left with some um, impairment in their ability to function and their ability to move. But on the other hand, the majority of children who have strokes will walk and will talk. Yes, and we know that because we have a talker right here <laughs> with us right now, and he is talking very well. How's um, Henry doing? Hi. Henry's doing great. We actually use the Birth of Three program in Connecticut. Um, for occupational, physical, and speech therapy, um, which he continues to do with aqua therapy now. And he also takes folic acid and aspirin every day. And he's doing great. Yes, Maybe he's now doing you'll very do your well. thumbs up. Well, can you show me the thumbs up? <laughs> I know you've been practicing. Can you show me? I want to see guy. Oh, we'll see him. Show her the thumbs up. Let's see the can thumbs up. Can you do it? I want to see it with your magic hand. Yay! <laughs> Good job! Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You're doing just great, and we're, we're so happy to see that he's doing, you know, as well as he's been doing. Um, Dawn, this whole issue is life and death. You know, I mean, this is so critical, and unfortunately, you and I know that a lot of physicians are not as aware of this as they should be, and children are not being diagnosed in a timely way. What's the solution? I think the solution is more research. We need more studies to know more about strokes in children. Because it's rare, it's difficult to do, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't do it. Yeah. I think we need to know more about why children have strokes, how to treat them once they have it, and how to help them recover after the fact. Well, tell us about the Stroke Alert Network that you've developed in Cincinnati. So what we've been doing is trying to simplify the message by um, teaching warning signs of stroke in a different way. Um, and the way that we've been doing it is a mnemonic FAST. For a brain attack, think FAST, F-A-S-T, face, arm, speech, time. And weakness and numbness in one side of the face or in the arm, slurred speech or trouble talking. And time is there because we want people to know to call it's time to call 911. Yeah. And so what we've been doing with that message is going into middle schools and teaching children about stroke so they can learn for their own future and for going home and teaching their parents about stroke or their grandparents. And, um, you know, it's not in the child textbooks in health. A very small portion of it is dedicated to stroke. So we're trying to spread the word that way. Yeah, well, and, you know, how many times have children come home and given the message to parents and they wind out being the ones that are absolutely correct in the diagnosis? You know, it's so important to learn signs of stroke, what they are for yourself. You need to know that. And if your child is in a risk group, alert the school nurse and also your child's teacher to the warning signs. This may happen at school. If you'd like more information about pediatric stroke and uh, certified stroke centers around the country, visit kidshavestrokes.org and also the National Stroke Association at stroke.org or you can call them at 1-800-STROKES. And thank you all so much for being on the show. Thank you, Henry. You did a great job.
For more information on today's topics, visit keepingkidshealthy.org.